Hello, Evident family. We are bringing you another uh, interview with someone. Some of you know uh, Rob, but but many, many of you may not have had a chance yet to meet him. Uh, Reverend Rob Kresh is uh, a priest, an Anglican priest, who uh, currently works at the World Bank, uh, originally from Canada, lives here uh, in D.C., and uh, a huge part of his gifting and sense of calling in ministry is to the Ministry of Healing Prayer. And so, uh, as some of you hopefully know, over the past few years, I've been praying a lot about the future direction and shape of our church, and I really felt called to encourage the ministries of the Holy Spirit in our community, um, but to do so in a way that's biblical and healthy and godly and balanced, uh, really out of my desire to, to have a community where everybody is set free to use the gifts that God has given them in ways that equip the saints and build up the church. And so this is a part of that conviction that I've had for a while. Um, at the same time that I've felt that sense of calling, I also realized that given my own background and areas of comfort and discomfort and familiarity and unfamiliar unfamiliarity, that I was not the best person to lead our church in this particular way. And so I feel like one of the ways that God has provided uh, for this sense of calling is to bring in other leaders who uh, are equipped and, uh, and and trained to help us uh, build this ministry. And so uh, we have uh, uh, people in our own uh, church community who have already been of our uh, part of our church, like our deacon, Lisa Schultz. But then uh, Rob has really been somebody that I've uh, enjoyed getting to know uh, and enjoyed just uh, our growing friendship, but also just uh, I've been in enjoyed uh, I've enjoyed being able to sit and uh, and watch and learn from Rob as he has helped to train and lead our growing uh, healing prayer ministry. He's going to be uh, teaching another class coming up this spring on the Holy Spirit for those of you who want to learn more about that. Uh, but uh, Reverend Rob Fresh, welcome, and it's good to see you. Yeah. This is great. I'm excited to have this this conversation. Yeah, I uh, so, so specifically we are having this conversation about a generational healing uh, service that is coming up at the end of this month in a little over a yeah. week on Sunday evening um, at uh, Annika Smith's house. We're going to be uh, having this generational healing service, and I even as I say that, I recognize that probably most people watching this video that's a new or newish concept yeah. uh, unless you grew up in a church that did this yeah. kind of thing this is this is pretty yeah. uh this is pretty rare so this is kind of an interview for you all to hear more from rob about what this is and, and why we're doing it so would love just to hear from you rob what is a generational yeah. healing service yeah um so it's uh this is um kind of part of the toolkit the broader toolkit of uh, ways that the that the Lord ministers to His people. It kind of stands alongside of physical healing and inner or emotional healing, um, deliverance. Um, but this focuses specifically on the effects of um, the sins committed by members of our family line, and also the effects of things done to members of our family line, the traumas and woundings that. Uh, have been have been that our, our members of our family line have experienced right um and so this this is uh, uh it, it, to be honest, you know I, it kind of has a, a a tender spot for me because uh, my own healing journey started with uh, a generational healing service and mm. um and I, I say a bit more about that when i when i uh, do teaching on it but um when i i was when i was in spiritual crisis uh uh, Jen was praying for me and praying about me, kind of like, Lord, what are we going to do about about <laughs> what are you, what are we going to do about Rob and what's going on with him? Um, and uh, and she heard the words generational healing, um, and so she Googled generational healing just because you know uh, this is what you do when you hear from God, you go to Google. You know, and uh, I'm kidding. Uh, and and so one of the first hits was. Uh, a generational healing service being offered by the Falls Church Anglican. Mm -hmm. um, so she signed me up, uh, signed us up, and off we went to the service, and it was very powerful. It really dug into stuff that um, had been happening on my family line, um, the effects of which I was feeling and I was experiencing. Right. And so the Lord used it to um, uncover and 
and and show me some of the stuff that was going on, but also just to lift the effects of it off of me, um, so that I could live more freely um, mm. in, in in the life that Jesus wants for me and for all of us. Well, yeah, I mean that's it's amazing to hear that because I feel like nine times out of ten when the idea of uh, wounds or trauma that we've experienced through our family and previous generations, we would immediately psychologize that. That's the stuff of yeah. therapy. It's the stuff of, uh, um, you know, people work for years on that. And I think that, uh, you know, yeah, as yeah. somebody with a, a background in clinical counseling, that's the knee jerk reaction. And yet you're talking about this uh, in a, in a different way. I assume there's a lot of overlap in all of that, but it's not as common yeah. to hear people talk about these kinds of wounds through the lens of uh, spiritual wounds and spiritual healing. That's right. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I've uh, both are on the table, both kind of ways of um, dealing with these, these things are on the table. Uh, I, I had a, a trusted therapist for a number of years as I brought forward somebody who was um, whose specialization was in what's called uh, family systems theory. Somebody right. who could, unpack you know the, the the dynamics going on in a family and that focused mainly on immediate family dynamics but this person uh is a christian and so she brought both lenses to bear she had her her you know her phd in psychology and her background and training plus just her discernment in the holy spirit mm. uh, and it was very very powerful um and it and uh and i saw the way that, that these things work together right um, some of the some of the tools in generational healing are also the same tools that are used in therapy. It was, um, but generational healing will go back a couple layers and it will look at things through the lens of the cross, through the lens of, of uh, what, uh, of spiritual dynamics that may not be named explicitly in with the, the frameworks and language of therapy. But, right. you know, as I found out with the, the, the therapist that I was seeing, um, they go together really, really well. Well, as you describe it, it just it sounds a lot more holistic. Um, yeah. Which, which yeah. I, yeah. And and these things can be so unbelievably complicated. Um, yeah. I so we, you know before we get into the, the the details of what this looks like, I mean, it occurs to me that, that some people may be thinking, well, if Jesus um, is capable of uh, through the Holy Spirit healing. Uh, everything, if, if we can just pray in general for Jesus to heal whatever needs to be healed, then why would you need something specific like a generational healing prayer service to, to focus on that? Um, it's, uh, it, that's a good question. Um, I think it's, I think it's a lot like, the, I mean, for me, healing, the healing ministry is really a, a part of the, the broader work of sanctification that that the spirit does and and there's a there's always kind of a working out of your salvation with fear and trembling it's there's something that god initiates in us and something that god accomplishes through christ on the cross and in the resurrection it has nothing to do with us it's something god enacts in um in history that that we are grafted into by faith and we experience the benefits of it but then there's there there's series of choices that we have to make as followers of Jesus to keep leaning into the process of sanctification, to keep saying yes to the Lord as he moves us deeper into obedience and to becoming more like Christ. And healing, the healing ministry and generational healing as a part of it is, uh, is, is, is a part of that, is, it, I guess, is a set of tools that allows us to say yes to the Lord. It allows us to come to him and receive from him um, that what the things that we need to be more healthy and free right um, and we're not you know we're not um objects upon which god acts we're we're people that whose free will god respects and he wants us to participate as friends and as and as his children in a journey um to to come deeper into intimacy with him into being more like jesus and so um you know, I, I, I look at uh, the, the healing prayer as a healing prayer as a technique and generational healing as an approach is, uh, you know, it's not um, it's not set in stone. These are just ways that people have found to work with the Lord in, to help people come free. Right. And 
you know, there's there, you know, at, at, when I teach on this, I get into some of the biblical basis for for how all this works. Well, I like, uh, yeah, I. I like that way of thinking about it. It's 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 one of the ways that we can say yes to uh, yeah. the Lord. That one of the ways that we can say yes to and kind of take our active uh, take an active role in uh, what ways that God is at work in our lives. Um, right. That that kind of a, and and it, and it sort of is a way where where God where we continue to have agency in that. Um, That's right. Well, it sounds good. Is it uh, is this biblical i mean is there anything in scripture that would lead us to believe that this is something that we should be doing or is it something that's just a total add-on kind of you know that comes from <laughs> tradition <laughs> um yeah so if it, it's interesting and um uh at the service i i do some teaching up front uh on this and and so there are two two basic understandings of this well, uh, well maybe three um one is that this, it's the first is the scope of salvation. Uh, we're formed by a, a, a very Western oriented understanding that puts the the individual as the primary kind of unit of analysis unit of, of social entity and the the Bible, the Old Testament in particular has a different way of looking at things and sees families and family lines um, as as a little as at least equal to that of the individual. Mm -hmm. And so there are lots of verses that talk about the scope of salvation being not just for the individual, but for families, for family lines, for generations, for, for cities, for nations. So the, for God, the scope is just so much bigger than just me and having Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, however, however important that is. And so that alone gave me hope to say um, my family, most of whom are not believers, uh, are are not that are, are not outside of God's interest and intention for salvation. Um, the second is that the the scriptures are clear that that there are consequences to the actions of of each generation that fall on the subsequent generations. Right. And 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 it's both consequences and blessing. So the the lives that we live, if we live for sin, will have an impact on our children and their children. But the lives of obedience that we live also have an impact on on the subsequent generations, and we carry those impacts, those effects on us. Even if we we don't, you know, even though we we may be following the Lord, if we have a bad ancestor, um, it, it creates an effect on the family line, and and the scriptures talk about that. Um, the third is that. Um, you see examples at a couple of places where intercession is made for the present generation mm -hmm. uh, with regards to the choices of past generations. And you see right. that particularly around the time of the, the post-exile period as, as Israel was processing, how did we get to this point? What was happening? And, and, a, and there's a recognition in those prayers that there was a long buildup to this moment, a buildup of disobedience. And the prayers were now, Lord, we repent and we repent on behalf of the, our, our ancestors who made these choices right. and therefore intervene in our present circumstance and turn things around. That That's kind of the model for generational healing. Right. The corporate repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, yeah that's uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, you you laying it out like that, I, it, it strikes me just how highly individualistic uh, we can be um, yeah. in all ways. But it, you know, in, in particular, as you say, when when it comes to even thinking about sanctification and how God works in our lives and how our identities are so inextricably linked to the the larger communities and you know primarily our families and yeah. our um, yeah and how it, it's all sort of tied together in ways that we we often can completely suppress or ignore. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, just a, an extra um, thought on this is I've always wondered why Jesus was baptized, right? Mm -hmm. When he came to John, um, John said, why am I baptizing you? You should be baptizing me. And Jesus said, this is for the sake of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And what I, it, it, it's a bit of a mystery to me. And I don't know if I have a full understanding of why Jesus wanted to be baptized or why he felt he needed to be. Mm -hmm. Um but what, what's interesting to me is his family line is laid out in two Gospels. 
Mm. And you look at the names of the people, you, you can find their stories in other parts of the Bible. Yeah. And there's pretty much nothing that his, the members of his family line didn't do. And there's pretty much nothing that didn't happen to the members of his family line. Like everything, murder, occult, deportation, slavery, genocide, like it's the full spectrum of sin having you know sin that's been committed and and wrongs and traumas that have been inflicted and jesus's family line carried it all yeah right. i'm i don't know but when jesus stepped into his humanity he embraced a, a very dysfunctional family line right. um and 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 that also gave me encouragement you know that god's not shocked by the stuff that by the junk that's on my family line or any of ours um, and jesus was there himself Right, yeah, he's taking on uh, and and stand and 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 visibly identifying with um, all of humanity, but in particular as a way that almost kind of highlights that uh, a very dysfunctional family line with uh, yeah. all Holy kinds of atrocities. Right, <laughs> That's right, right. It, 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 yeah, it is. is uh, it gives hope to people like us. <laughs> As I think about my family, seriously. Oh man, uh, it's great. Well, um, last question for you. I, you know, if if I were to go to this, if somebody were to go to this, and it's it's my first time, and I don't know what to expect. What can I expect? What's what's going to happen at this service? Yeah, um, it follows a um, uh, a kind of a, a it'll be a familiar. Um, kind of layout or flow. Um, so it starts with some teaching. Um, I go into more of the biblical parts of uh, generational healing and, and the basis for it. Uh, but I also bring in some of the some of the, the recent evidence from the fields of epigenetics and neuroscience that talks about how um, our biology, our DNA can actually be marked by past traumatic experiences, how um, how uh, behavior that was behavior, how traumas can shape behaviors uh, uh, that are then passed on to subsequent generations, um, even how even the linkages between sin and medical conditions, and mm. how and, and and phenomena like cancer running in a family or alcoholism, things like that. Um, and so I, I'd link in some of that. Uh, we hand out um, a, what's called a genogram. It's basically right. a family tree. Uh, and I walk people through some instructions on how to fill that out, what to look for, what to think about. We take some time uh, sitting with the Lord, letting him bring to mind things that we need to write down. Uh, we may not know every the name of everybody on our family trees. Uh, some of our families are, are complicated uh, for all kinds of reasons. And so we it, our, the tree may be complex or parts of it are, are hard are not able to be defined but we write down everything we know and all the patterns of sin and brokenness and trauma and disease and etc that we can think of mm. um, it doesn't have to be exhaustive if at the end of two minutes you know there's more the lord's got you but and then we take that and we pray through a liturgy that prays off the effects of sin and trauma on our family line and mm. Uh, and then we take these trees, these family trees, and we bring them up to we, we bring them up to where the bread and the wine is. Um, and, and usually we set up a cross. We, so we're literally putting our, our family trees in at the foot of the cross mm. in the hands of the Lord. And then we receive back the the, the bread and the wine. Um, mm. And then and then optionally, people can receive prayer afterwards if if something kind of is stirred up and they want a little bit more prayer. Um, but, but that's very basically it. It's a very quiet reflective service mm. yeah that sounds fantastic and I, I i particularly love the use of the of the genogram i've in my own life and then in people that i've worked with a counseling particularly in in marriage or premarital counseling i've just found that to be an extraordinarily powerful tool um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and also in in doing the research that is required to fill it out I've, there's been so many stories i've heard of people uh learning things about their families um, that That's they never right. knew, uh, making connections and seeing patterns that just never occurred to them before. So uh, that's that's, right. that's very, very cool. Well, um, I really I feel like we could just keep talking about this, uh, but I really appreciate you getting on and, and being willing to share. I hope this video is helpful to those of you who are wanting to learn more. And I hope that people will see this as an opportunity to 
to uh, say yes to what God might be doing in their lives. Um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate too. you. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate you, Rob. And, and thanks for your uh, willingness to use your gifts to, to serve in this way. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. God bless you all. And uh, we will see you Sunday.